What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the new face of video games, Blessing at Aoye Jr. Tim, I adore your shirt. Thank you. Thank you. It looks it's one of my fancy right ones. Now. It was from a sponsorship. I don't know. I don't remember which oh, yeah. one. Let me see that tag. Yeah, I'm having I, trouble. There's no, way, there's no way. I, see it. <laughs> I will say, you know how Greg usually brings out his Busan and that gives him this burst of energy and he comes uh-huh. through on a, on not even 10, he's on 11. I have my green tea in my Rick and Morty cup and it gives me the opposite effect where I don't have the energy of the Greg on Busan, but I do have the the chill of the me on green tea. Introspectiveness. Yeah. Ooh. And so if I seem a little bit more laid back, it's the green tea. I promise. I don't okay. Do okay. I, like I love that. that. I, I love that. that. Nice, nice little tea time with blessing. And uh, that other voice here, of course, is the one and only Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Hello, Tim. It's been a great week for clicking heads, and uh, really I'm has forward to more and more weeks. Yeah, yeah, has. yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk a lot about clicking them heads in this episode. I have a feeling, and I'm excited about that because Halo is upon us uh, a lot sooner than we expected, which is such a fun thing to say. But we'll get to all of that later. First off, let me tell you that this is the kind of funny games cast where each and every week we get together to talk about video games and all the things that we love about them. You can get it on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games or You can go to roosterteeth.com, but if you want to get it as a podcast, all you got to do, go to your favorite podcast service and search for Kind of Funny Games Cast, and we'll be right there for you. If you wanted to get the show ad-free, if you wanted to watch it live as we record it, and if you want the exclusive post show that we do for every single episode of the Kind of Funny Games Cast, you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like our Patreon producers, Pranksy. Tyler Ross, Delaney Twinning, Julian the Gluten-Free Gamer, Alex J. Sandoval, Techie Haas, James Hastings, and Casey Andrew have all done. We appreciate you all so very, very much. And because you supported us on Patreon, you will not need to hear the ads for me undies, uncommon goods, and stamps that we'll tell you all about later. Where do we want to start, guys? You want to start with the Pokemon or do you want to start with the Halo? Start, start with Pokemon. I want to know all about what the heck this game is doing. Let's start with the Pokemon. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I have been playing Diamond. Blessing has been playing Pearl. Bless, I want to start with you. Mm. Have you played Diamond and Pearl before? And what are you thinking of this so far? So this is my first time playing Pokemon Diamond and or Pearl. Uh, My history with Pokemon is kind of like a bit all over the place because I played the first three generations and I love and adore the first three generations. Then I had a hard hard fall off because I didn't own a DS growing up or any like any handheld that came after that. So DS or 3DS, I didn't own those. Then I came back around and played Pokemon Sword and I liked it fine. I actually wasn't really in love with it because I think the thing that I realized with Pokemon Sword is that I think I've outgrown it. Not necessarily that the, uh, not because like Pokemon is for kids or anything like that. I think just the po- Pokemon formula is a thing that I, I think over the years I've just gravitated toward games that like do different things. And I've played more different types of games. And I've, I've become such a big persona fan and like, you know, the, the, I don't know. There's something about Pokemon that is, that hasn't really grabbed me in recent games that is like connected with me in a way where i'm like oh i gotta go play this oh this is the one oh snap i gotta I, I gotta get to it that said i still love the brain of pokemon i had a fun time pokemon go when that came out in 2016 like pokemon spinoff games have such a good i have such good memories of you know pokemon stadium pokemon stadium 2 like the pokemon anime there's so many different facets of the pokemon world that i feel a big connection toward and a lot of that is the nostalgia uh, nostalgia aspect of it and so i've been very curious jumping into pokemon pearl seeing how I'm going to take to this one, because this is one of the more, at this point, older ones, you know, it's kind of like, I guess in in the mid range of like, you know, like the time it's been since uh, the original Pokemon Pearl and Diamond came out. 2006? 2006, really? That feels, that's wild. Holy cow. Uh, Jumping into this one, not really having any preconceived expectations or like even knowing what the, like the deal with this specific generation is, I am halfway through the game. I have four out of the badges and I've probably put in about eight hours so far. And so these are only like half halfway impressions. I'm pretty bored (laughs) with it so far. Like it's, it's, it's Pokemon, which is, I think the thing that people come and expect this game to be right. I think Pokemon has that solidified formula that like you go in, you know, you're going to catch the Pokemon, you know, you're going to defeat the gym leaders. You know that like, if depending on what kind of play you are, you might be going after like, I want to catch my favorite shinies or I want to like, I want to catch them all or I want to like grind and like level up my, all my Pokemon. I think Pokemon speaks to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways in terms of how they want to approach it and come to it. For me, I just like to go in, you know, 
complete the campaign or complete the story, catch as many as I can, and then be done with it, and I move on to the next game. And so far, halfway through it, I think the thing I'm realizing with this po- with this Pokemon is that the Pokemon formula is so like it's so standardized and so fixed in that if you told me I had played this game before, I would have believed you. Just just based off of like the you know going into jumping into the world for the first time, going into the first like route, like route one or whatever it is in this game. The first thing you run into is like a bird that is basically a Pidgey. Oh, cool. I'm going to catch that. Next thing you run into is a rodent. That's basically like any other <laughs> early rodent. It's like, oh, cool. I'm, I'm going to catch that. Like a normal type Pokemon. And then like I go into a cave. Uh, it's a Geodude. Okay, sweet. I'm going to catch that too. Oh, it's an Onix. Oh, the first gym leader's rock type. Sweet. Cool. I, I, I know what this is like. My fire Pokemon isn't, isn't going to do me great here. And it's, it's such going through the motions with it that like you know i don't necessarily have anything bad to say about this game because i think as a as a video game as a, and as a pokemon game like it does pretty much everything it's supposed to right there's no, it's pokemon at its core and like i if you're a pokemon fan and you're a, pokemon, a fan of pokemon diamond and pearl i think you're gonna like this one but for me personally coming into it i guess like looking for my next Pokemon experience, looking to jump into this Pokemon game for the first time. I was hoping for something that was going to stand out a bit more to me. And it's so far, it's fine. Like, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to finish it just for the sake of finishing it. Cause I'm, I've made it this far and I like playing Pokemon in general, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not, it's not blowing me away by any means. I do like the art style though. That is one thing I will say. And I know the art style is conflicting for a lot of people. I like the cutesy art style. That's a bit, uh, like the uh, what's what is it? Link's Awakening that came out a couple years ago. It's not as good as Link's Awakening by any means, but I do like the direction of it. I think it's cute. But Tim, where were you at with it? Uh, I am. I'm actually pretty surprised that I'm right there with you for almost everything you just said, with the exception of the art style thing. Uh, but I I'm really surprised by kind of how bored I am playing this. I have played Diamond and Pearl before. I've played all the core generations of, of Pokemon and. My favorite gen has been Gen 2, and my favorite Pokemon game ever is Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which is the Gen 4 remakes of Gen 2. Gen 4 uh, had a lot of like kind of big steps forward and advancements for the Pokemon uh, core gameplay, specifically dividing the special attacks and physical attacks into like different types of stats. Uh, and that was a really, really big thing that fundamentally changed a lot of the more kind of uh, involved elements of the combat as you go on. And also something I appreciate a lot about these games is the Gen 4 pushed the level cap up a bit. So you're not facing the Elite Four at like level 50. Like it's a little closer to the 70s. So there's a little bit more there. There's a little bit more challenge and you're not just able to steamroll everybody uh, from the your first try without even really grinding, which I always kind of appreciated. Uh, but having said that, I think you're right that this game um, is so by the numbers of what we expect for Pokemon. And I really enjoyed Diamond and Pearl when they first came out. And like, let me, I should actually have even started by saying this. If you've already made up your mind about this game, you're going to, it's going to deliver. Like if you're like, I love Gen 4 and I'm so happy they're doing a remake, you're going to get what you're, you're seeing here. And it is the game. There's some things that are changed. Um, I know that a lot of people are going to be upset about the, the way experience share works. Like there are modern elements of Pokemon that are put into this. Uh, go for it, Bless. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm actually glad I have you here uh, as somebody who's played the original because I've, I've had a lot of questions in terms of what's different from this one versus the original. And like, can you give, can you give me like a quick like, hey, this, this, this and this is, are, are, are new. Like is experience share a thing that's always been there? No, not. I mean, experience share in the older Pokemon games was like an item you got pretty later on that you yeah. could equip and then it would share it across your team. But in the more modern Pokemon games, it's kind of just your entire team gets points. And that really kind of divides a lot of people's thoughts on these games. I personally am a fan of it, and I think that it kind of helps kind of speed things up because that's a big problem I have with this game is the first bit of it, I would say. I'm a little behind you. I'm, I'm about to get to the, the fourth gym. Uh, but like that whole half of the game, it's slow and it's kind of boring and it's not like the most interesting um, kind of environments and there's not the most interesting Pokemon you're seeing and what you're saying about it being kind of formulaic Pokemon of the type of Pokemon you're seeing, the type of environments you're in, the type of gym leaders you're facing. Like, again, it's a remake of an old game. So I already knew this going in that Gen 4 wasn't necessarily my my favorite in the, the Sinnoh region, at least. Um, but I think the, the biggest problem is 
for every advancement this game did that like kind of helps speed up the gameplay and stuff. You got the running boots or running shoes, which were in the original too, but it feels a little faster. I still would have liked it even faster uh, than it is in this. And um, the big thing for me is the level of customization of the the buttons. It's like, guys, just like allow me to do whatever I want with button customization and, and mapping because what I've really liked about Diamond and Pearl uh, back on the DS was you can use the shoulder buttons to act as the A button. So you could play mm -hmm. the game one-handed, which was always really, really nice uh, for that thing, especially for this type of grindy RPG where you could kind of multitask if you want or just the ability to play it one hand is always very nice. This game lets you do that, but only with the left hand. Like the right hand, the R button does work to select, but the analog stick on the Switch doesn't work to control it. And I know that sounds like a very small thing to complain about, but that's an example of one thing that's like, why not? Like you guys yeah. got 90% of the way there and you didn't do that last 10%. So it kind of feels weird. And I think it's Pokemon a reminder. Let's go had that. Uh, let's go Pikachu and Eevee. I, I think you could do either one. Yeah. You just can't yeah. in this. And the problem for me is like, I want this game to kind of feel faster. I want this game to kind of like, give me a reason to play the remakes as opposed to the originals. And I think that's the thing for me where I'm like, I, I do not recommend these over the originals. Like I think the diamond and pearl holds up way better than what I've experienced so far playing this. My memories of those games are way fonder than my experience playing this right now. It feels sterile. I really dislike yeah. the art style. Um, I think that the, and I've, I've disliked it since we first saw it. And if you disagree, cool. It's for you. This is not for me. Um, I, you bring up the Link's Awakening, and it's like, no, it's not Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening was fantastically designed, didn't run well, but looks fantastic. This doesn't. It doesn't really have its own identity. It's kind of just, hey, here's some chibi Pokemon stuff. And on top of that, they don't even fully commit to it. And the battle scenes, look, they look totally different uh, in these kind of empty-looking environments that aren't really interesting and don't really yeah. feel and, like and they're the part battle, of the and world. The battle we're scenes in. that we have seen in, like, I want to say the last like four generations of Pokemon at this point, Tim. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh yeah, then that's. I think that's that's one of my things with it is like I like the cuteness of the art style, but I think you, you're spot on in terms of how sterile it feels, especially when you are switching back and forth from the the overworld environment into the battles. I swear, I swear the battle scene feels like it's not changed since like the last four games. Uh, at least like since I've jumped in, since Let's Go Pikachu, I feel like they've all been relatively the same. And like it's a fine battle scene. And, like I think they have a lot of good uh, like accessibility stuff there in terms of ease of like player friendly ease of use. Cool, press X to throw the Pokeball, shit like that. That makes things go quicker and easier. But yeah, when I'm running through the overworld, uh, there there is a level of yeah, like the I think there's just a level of like of personality that's missing that makes personality this, man this game feel like it uh, it stands out from the other ones where it is it's 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 cute and that's kind of that's kind of what it is uh, and like I, I, there are some formulaic things too that I think they've introduced within the last few generations that they seem to lump into this one as well. One of the things I remember playing Pokemon Let's Go and they do the thing where as you're making your way through the game, they'll introduce you to the Elite Four in ways that they didn't have in the original game where you'll just run in to uh, like Lance and he's just there and he talks to you Lower for like. Two yeah, Lorelai. They'll talk to you for one or two pieces of dialogue, and they'll help you out, and then they peace out or whatever. And like, you know, and that that stuff never felt of consequence or felt like a oh man, you you guys are building a world here. It felt like an attempt, or and it felt like a step, but it never that stuff never uh, uh, went all the way. And there are elements of this game that I assume are kind of a similar deal, where there are characters that I run into, and they're there for like two seconds, and then they, they peace out, and I'm like all right, I wonder if you're in the Elite Four or I wonder if you're an actual character that I'm going to uh, run into again. Or like, you know, I, I I don't have any point like where I meet a character. And I'm like, oh, they're of consequence. I'm going to I'm going to like have a whole plot with this person. Like none of that feels, I guess, of of consequence here. Without getting too into the the nerdy side of this stuff, uh, Diamond and Pearl, I think, was really kind of a, a turning point for the franchise with them to try to make story elements that and uh, characters that felt a little bit more fleshed out than we had seen before. Uh, Ruby and Sapphire had their whole plot with the team Aqua and, and Magma and stuff. But like the teams in this one, their story kind of like I think does have a bit more consequence overall mm -hmm. uh, for how they're doing things. And there are a couple Elite Four members in uh, Diamond and Pearl that are awesome fantastic characters and like some of the the series best um but they're they're few and far between i think it all goes back to one of my bigger issues with it is this is really the the first uh generation to introduce the rival that is just kind of like 
not an aggressive rival. They're just another like friendly person that's with you. And like, it just, it doesn't feel like I want to beat them. I feel better than them from the get go. Like you don't have that kind of antagonistic relationship that like red and blue had, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's just kind of like something that I like a lot from Pokemon games. So when this, this is uh, one of the first ones and Ruby and Sapphire had this problem a little bit as well. Um, but Ruby and Sapphire, I thought were a little more interesting from the onset in terms of locations and what you're doing. And it, it felt like a lot more um, new Pokemon we're seeing, whereas this kind of, it just goes back to being a little formulaic. And um, in terms of the visuals, like not just the art style, but uh, there's decisions made where like the edges of the screen are oftentimes like blurred a little yes. bit. Yeah. And it doesn't look good, like just at I all. I there. And, and that's upsetting. But then every once in a while, there's like a moment where I'm like, oh, okay. Like you had something here. Like you'll be in a, a patch of grass and like you'll see the shadow of a cloud that's above you. You never see the cloud, but you just see the shadow kind of moving over you. And I'm like, all right. Like it's not like there was no effort put into this. Like, but that also just kind of makes the stuff that's like, ah, oh, that doesn't look great kind of stand out a bit more. And like, it just sucks that this game kind of has the vibe of like a fan made game which a fan made game in like 2012, which is like, okay, cool. You use unity to, to make some stuff and that's cool. But nowadays we get fan made games that look utterly incredible. And this isn't that, you know, this is just kind of like, it feels stuck in time a bit and I'm, I'm not going to be uh, completing this one. I, I'm, wow. I'm going to give up on it. Yeah. I, it's just, there's something about it, man. It lacks the personality to, to make me want to keep going. And it, it, it just isn't isn't too great, but I will say it uh, is fantastic on the OLED, very colorful, and the the lines look sharp as hell. Like it's there's nothing offensively bad about it, and like you were saying earlier, bless. Yeah. Like even the art style, it's not bad. It's just not exciting, and that's kind of the end of it. Andy, what's up? Tim, did you finish Sword or Shield? Yes. How would you compare the experience overall? to this because i'm coming from this from a perspective of not having ever played the original and not having access to the original in in a realistic way where you know yeah, if yeah. i wanted to play the original i'd have to get a new handheld and i'd have to ebay some stuff most likely um the reason why i've been interested in this is i didn't really think i'd cared about pokemon until sword and shield came back and i was or, or came around and i played that on switch and a lot of it was playing that on a big screen that I kind of cared about. And I'm not, I'm rarely the handheld type of gamer. Um, and so I liked just being able to sit down and experience that on a big screen. The same with uh, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. Like I beat those as well. And I had a lot of fun with those. I don't really play Pokemon games for the story or the characters. I feel like I'm rarely blown away by, wow, this character arc is pretty fantastic. It seems like, though, I still might enjoy this because it is kind of a base level Pokemon Dude, it, game. No, this is gonna it's give a you Pokemon, Pokemon game, man. Like, this if is going to give you a Pokemon fix. fix. You're going to get the fix from this. Like, there's okay. a quality game here, man. Like, Diamond and Pearl are good games. It's just, they kind of, especially these being remakes, it just feels like we've gotten this 100 times because sure. we've gotten this 100 times. So it's like, I feel think that's the reason that, like, to me, it especially doesn't feel that, like, special like even if they were to remake black and white i think that'd be a lot more interesting in, in uh with this type of engine uh just because of what those games actually were but like playing this it just does kind of feel like all right i've been here before and i preferred how it looks before so that's kind of the biggest mm -hmm. thing for me that's your mileage sucks. may vary on that so if you like this art style hey it's it's here for you and like this game exists but yeah. i any day would rather play the original diamond pearl over this i also, I also think with the pokemon sword and shield comparison i had a lot of similar complaints with pokemon sword and shield in terms of the formula of it and feeling like oh yeah pokemon is just pokemon the thing i will say about pokemon sword and shield is that i think that game goes far enough in a lot of its gimmicks like the stadium setting like the like the build up of like you walk in through like the stadium and you see the dude the pokemon ball head dude and you like talk to him and all this shit i think there's enough there in terms of what it brings to kind of try to expand the world, even though none of it is like super amazing or yeah. none of it feels like it pushes the bar. You the open world sections too. Yeah, it, yeah, it was, the open world sections. It, it, it was different, slightly different in like personality and presentation. Like it really tried to hone in on the presentation of things. Yeah, I think there's enough there to at least for me when I was playing it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm for sure gonna finish this because at the very least, I'm I'm there are exciting new things here that I want to see and I, and I want to see through. 
playing Pokemon uh, uh, Shining Pearl for the first time, I uh, it feels like I'm regressing in a way where I'm like, cool, this it is going to give you your Pokemon fix, and I'm getting my Pokemon fix off of this. But I think we've gotten so much Pokemon within the last three or four years mm-hmm. that this just does not feel special to me. I'm halfway through this game, and I'm like, I've played this game a billion times at this point, and like, there's nothing about it that is separating it out from any other Pokemon. It almost feels like I'm playing Pokemon the game at this point, right? Like, nothing about it feels fresh and new. Granted, it's a remake, but I don't know. I was looking for something, at least anything, to, like, bring me any kind of, oh, this is, like, this This is this generation's thing, right? And I know there's, like, the Pokemon, uh, like, fa- not the fashion show, but, like, the Pokemon show stuff where you can decorate your Pokeball and, like, do dances yep. and shit. That doesn't speak to me. And so, like, I did that once, and I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good on this. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like, I'm not really getting anything special. That sucks to hear, it. like, uh, especially because, Andy, I'm like you, where it's just, like, when a Pokemon game comes out, it's, like, cool. I'm I'm down for this, like, basic JRPG, mindless, uh, collecting collecting some pocket monsters and, and chilling out. And, like, uh, what you, uh, Tim and Bless, are saying, it's, like, yeah, like, th- like, I would go into this game being, like, totally cool, whatever, but, like, right now I'm also uh, playing Persona 4 Golden. Like, I'm going back to that and, like, trying to actually complete it, and that is, like, a a much more interesting, like, collect monsters with, like, fully fleshed out story. So, like, like I'm scared I'm going to go into this and, like, play an hour and be like, well, it's not Persona 4, and then just, like, Mm -hmm. completely ignore it. So it it, it sucks to hear that it's not bringing uh, the heat in uh, this generation. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good it's a, it's a good excuse to play a classic Pokemon game, you know. And I think I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it because this is my first time playing Pearl, and I I like it as an excuse to be like, cool, I finally I finally played this generation. And when they put out a remake of the next one or of Black and White or of X and Y, I'll play those so I can like have that I guess like back knowledge filled or like get mm-hmm. that get that experience of playing those games that I missed. But, There's a lot there for you, bless. Like I, I again, yeah. I, I want to say Gen Four is a good Gen of pokemon for sure and like there are moments and especially the elite four very cool stuff uh and some of the end game stuff's really interesting as well but yeah i just think that this this remake doesn't necessarily do it too much justice but moving on halo infinite multiplayer andy cortez it dropped it happened on the 20th anniversary of the xbox you've been playing the hell out of it what do you think it dropped, it happened, and it's functional. Holy shit, is it functional. Well, granted, seeing people get kicked out every once in a while. What game doesn't kick you out of stuff? Um, but for it to work this well mm-hmm. on the launch day where... Uh, how many were playing concurrently? 220-something thousand on yeah, somewhere Steam? Around that, somewhere around that. And that's just um, Steam numbers. 272. Just Steam numbers, okay. which yeah. is absolutely wild. And the fact of that, again... It, that that's this is why you have flights this is why you delay the game for everything to work as seamlessly as it did even yesterday we're me and mike are streaming and we are coordinating large custom games with viewers in chat to come play wow. and switching teams and picking the game mode like all of it was working so well i was really just was blown surprised. away by how well it worked yeah, uh, that, when that we was... think about how when we think about forza's yeah. release and we think about trying to enter a multiplayer game there or just trying to join somebody's party. I was pretty worried with this game releasing yesterday, especially when the plan was, if it releases, we play Halo all day, and then it's like, well, we're going to try to play Halo all day. Yeah, we know what new releases are. That was a major concern when the rumors were popping off on Friday when we recorded X-Cast and uh, uh, Mike and Paris were talking about it. It's like, they didn't see that this was, like, based off the rumors, they didn't think that this was going to be true because they were convinced of, like, servers are going to melt. Look at what Forza, what happened to Forza this week. There's no way that they're going to be able to pull this off. Like, there's no way they, they're going to do this on Monday. And apparently it's the, the Microsoft Azure servers, which is uh, what Halo's operating on, which I don't know whether Forza's operating in those or not, but I, I it doesn't seem like it because this just worked really damn well. But not only was it all functional and the experience was great, but the gameplay is so incredibly great. Um... On PC, I feel like it's been optimized so much better than it was during the earlier flights. I still think it could do a bit where, like, uh, my GPU gets really maxed out, whether I'm on low or high settings. And I just feel like there's something kind of not connecting there uh, uh, in when it comes to just making the game perform a little bit better. But, god damn, it's so much fun. The, the maps that we haven't played might be some of my favorites of I, dude, the, so that's of the thing. catalog. 
I, I haven't been able to play this at all just because I'm playing some games for review and stuff and, and just general work shit. So the the test flights we've done, there was three levels, right, that we got to play? Eventually a fourth, which was the okay. behemoth, uh, big team gotcha. battle one. Th that's the the one that's like um, that Halo 2 level, uh, the start of the day. Ascent? Ascent, right? No, the second map, no, the third map is more like Ascent. Um the one I'm talking about is the big team battle one that is like really, 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 really big. Gotcha. You're right. I didn't play the Ascent one. Uh, that was okay. the only one I didn't get that a chance to That was like to a mid-size mid uh, map. Besides that, uh, and tell I think me about... I called it Behemoth, and I don't think that's the actual name. So sorry if I got that wrong. Tell me about the the new ones. How many are there? And, and you're saying you like you like them a lot? Um, yeah. So uh, I think most of them are... There's one other larger map that we're watching right now on the screen for the viewers. And this one is... One of the larger maps that you could do CTF on, and it's also, there's a new mode where you are essentially, I don't know if I love this new mode, Tim. Uh, it seems kind of confusing, especially when you're doing a big team battle sort of thing. What it is, is there are canisters to collect around the world, and you have to collect five of them and bring them back to your base. And once you collect five, bam, that's a point. And I think it's like first to three. Um, I didn't necessarily love the gameplay and, and feel of this mode, I'm not sure if it was maybe there's too many people playing. It just didn't really feel like there was a whole lot of synchronicity <laughs> between the mm -hmm. whole squad. Um, but CTF feels as good as it ever does. This map I wasn't the uh, the biggest fan of, but there are a couple of the smaller arena maps, the 4v4 style maps that are really badass, Tim. Like really just well laid out levels. Um cool verticality in some moments. Um it just it just feels like this is the prototypical kind of way you build out a 4v4 arena map. Um, and then there's another fairly, there's a couple of other fairly large maps that are, I think uh, we were playing with our buddy Chris Anka, and he said, yeah, they put us in this game on 4v4, and it is too big. Um, and then after playing Big Team Battle on that map, I was like, damn, this is a really big map for 4v4. And maybe those are just things they need to iron out and, and make it, it a little bit more fair, you know. Um but goddamn, like it, it, it still feels so good to play. Um, I felt all of the, I, I got the fix. You know, it all came Hell rushing yeah, back. Man. Him. Dude, it feels I'm incredible. St yeah, I'm so stoked, man. Bless, have you been able to play it all? Do you plan to play it all? Oh yeah, I was playing a whole lot yesterday. I was playing with uh, Andy and Mike a bit on their stream as they were doing big team battle, and then before that and after that, I was playing a lot of the four v four modes. And I've been having a blast with it. I'm surprised by how much I'm already like craving it and wanting to go back. And even today, as I've been working, there have been multiple times where I'm like, oh, how much time do I have before the next thing? Do I have like 15 minutes? Can I do a quick match of Halo? Uh, and like, I'm not, I'm not been able to get back into it today, but I can't wait to get back into it. And I think that's where I'm, that's where I'm at with it. Um, you know, like I've been, I've been enjoying the four v four modes more than the the big team battle stuff. I think the big team battle, I might need to work my way up to, or it might just not be, be for me. I think there's. I, I there there's less of an ownership of like what's going on and like I like the idea of with 4v4 I have an actual impact on this match like the, the if I don't perform then we are losing and I kind of I kind of like that element of the the 4v4 and so like I've been really enjoying that I like the the actual game feel like historically Halo has just not been my thing and like I gravitate I've grad gravitated towards other competitive FPSs you know like Call of Duty Apex Fortnite like pretty much anything else that's not halo i'll gravitate toward and this being the one where i'm like okay i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna play a hell of a lot of uh halo infinite and actually see if i can like get into this thing so yes. far makes me I'm, so excited so far i'm super into it um i love the customization seeing other people's spartans spartans right andy mm -hmm. yeah seeing other people's spartans they look sick and i can't i it's it's been that double-edged thing of me me going oh man i want to customize and i can't wait to get there but then trying to grind for stuff and realizing oh this is taking a while to get anywhere like i it, it it seems it seems like xp is very slow to dole out and it seems like it's very much dependent on doing the like the daily objectives and the weekly objectives as opposed to like getting xp every single match for kills or just for completed matches um and so like that's the thing that i, they I are guess aware of it which is are good. they aware of it? Okay, is yes. that like a is that like a common complaint people have? Because that was the thing discourse. I noticed. Oh yeah, it's it's been pretty big already. Of like, damn, it's taking a long time to level up, and it's something I like. I hadn't really tried to play a game where I'm grinding for a battle pass since I guess I guess I did a bit of it in Warzone, but that's where I'm just playing the game. In Fortnite was the one where I'm like, 
all right, let's do the challenges. Get a get a kill with this mm -hmm. gun. Get like, and I never did that with Warzone. I was just kind of always leveling up anyway. Um, but I didn't really notice those issues because I am just my brain hasn't been trained in that way. So when I open up Halo and I see the challenges, get a kill using this weapon, I'm like, I just kind of ignore all that. I just play the game, mm. and then seeing That's all that too. pop up, I go, oh, you know what? I haven't really been even noticing the XP gains. And a lot of people aren't happy about it, and they're saying it's uh, definitely really, really slow. And a, Halo, a, a lot of the people at Halo already kind of mentioned, like, "Yeah, we're we're, we're going to look into okay. it." Okay, thank uh, God. Because yeah. like, as somebody who great. plays, as somebody who plays like a lot of Apex, that's a thing that whenever I'll I'll do them sometimes if there are challenges that suit me. Like, if it is play two games as Loba, well, I was going to play as Loba anyways, so I'm going to do yeah. that. Or like, you know, get a few kills using the R301. It's like cool. I'll I'll do that. Um, but for the most part, if there's anything that is anywhere near the outside of my like purview, then I'm like, cool, I'm not going to do that. Cause I'm, I'm, I just want to play the game to play the game, right? I just want to play the game to try and get the wins. And oftentimes I just see those dailies and those weeklies as distractions if they are going too far in terms of the way that I want to play. And so I like, I like having the option of ignoring that stuff and still leveling up my battle pass or my general XP. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm glad that it seems like they're at, at the very least aware of it. And I hope they... I'll pay pivot uh, with it in a way that like satisfies everyone. Um, but Andy, go for it. I just want to say, and I want to apologize for just seeming so incredibly unprepared when Tim asked me what my favorite maps are. And I'm like, oh, shit, I should have like come up with a list of them. Um, but the newer maps that they added, Aquarius uh, is fantastic. That's one of the ones that I loved. We played one of our first competitive modes where you can actually go into competitive and get ranked after a certain amount Ooh. of games. And we played competitive and it was CTF and it was... It was one of those games, Tim, where we oh, are yeah. yelling and it is intense as hell and we go to overtime and we're just hoping to tie because this team is really damn good and we ended up getting the final capture for sudden death and we're just like, that's our final game of, of competitive. <laughs> I never wanted to, that was way too sweaty. I never want to do that again. So Aquarius is fantastic. That's one of the close quarters maps along with Streets, which is the map that IGN had the exclusive on. Streets is also super well laid out. It's really visually and aesthetically uh, good looking as well. Um, the larger maps, the one that you hadn't played was Behemoth. That was the okay. third or fourth map during the, the flights. And then the gigantic one was Fragmentation. That's the big team battle one. And that it was we the, all sort which of is had the one that we were playing? Uh, big team night. battle or? Big team battle. What was that map? Was that well, there's a couple of them. So fragmentation is one of them with all the rocks and the mountains. There's okay. also another one that's sort of rocky and mountainy, which is kind of the overall aesthetic that they're going for without with uh, outdoors maps. And that one is called High Power. And that one's really cool. That one has the gigantic hole in the center of the map that mm. Mike was like, Andy, get in the Warthog. Let's do this. And yeah. he drove us right into the center hole, which is like kind of meant to be there as a be careful. But that one is a lot think behemoth but a bit smaller in scale you get from each side uh, uh pretty quickly and there's really good lanes there's good lifts that send you to the opposite side and get you verticality it, high power is a really cool map it's going to be awesome for a lot of um uh capture the flag games but i'm with bless i prefer more of the the 4v4 style yeah. stuff yeah um i love kind of hope you know trying to be the x factor for my team and c pulling through the clutch when it's one reason why um, I don't gravitate towards Battlefield because I just don't really feel like I'm, I'll get a couple kills and, oh, we're still losing our point, yeah. you know? Like, I oh, am I doing anything here? Like, yeah, does my uh, input really matter here? The 4v4 maps definitely feel really, really damn good. One of the things I want to mention, too, is, like, I, I, one thing I really appreciate about the game is how polished it is. Just on all aspects, you know, from how it looks, because the game looks phenomenal just in terms of visuals and, like, when I, when I kill somebody, seeing their weapons drop down, like, it took me a while before I realized, like, oh, I can pick those up. Like, those weapons just look like they're part of the yeah. environment, the way they fly off the character. And I'm like, oh, shit, I can pick those up and actually use them. So, like, it looks beautiful. I think it, it controls super well, and, like, the shooting feels so good. Um, and, like, that that's something that's never really hit me for, for Halo. The times that I've played Halo at a friend's place or downloaded it real quick to play with a friend online, uh, I've never really loved the feel of Halo just compared to the shooters that I do love. This time around, I think after being a bit more um, uh, committal to it, or after committing to it a bit more, I think it, the 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 actual game feel of it has grown on me. Just in terms of, oh, this is I'm I'm getting kills here, and I now I know how a kill feels in Halo. Now I know how this is supposed to feel. Now I know the actual flow of it of like getting shots off and then getting closer and then meleeing them in the face and getting that mm -hmm. kill. 
getting into that flow has been so fun uh and it feels so clean and then yeah like just the the general like even ui the way that the ui looks in the game is so clean and so good the the sound is i've never heard a video game sound this good God, i miss i Period, miss, tim i miss the fucking melee sound when Dude, you melee like, someone and that like crunch and you're like oh, it is yes, so chunky it's so good but the thing with halo is it's always had an amazing sound identity when it comes to the the sound of different weapons the sound of the punch the uh, the announcer of the the multiplayer Double matches kill. like so many things as well as obviously the music and god even in multiplayer they really really knocked it out of the park with the music we've already talked about all that but playing this version of the game so far i am blown away by this is actual dolby atmos mix from uh from them like the game is made for it and it is on a level i've never heard whether it's in headphones or in actual like uh surround sound atmos speaker setup i am utterly blown away they fucking they did the thing and i I don't know that I'm going to be able to play other games in like, like in the same way. Cause it's like, I've, I love sound. I love that type of stuff. And this is, it's so next level that it's kind of it's like, brought embarrassing you to another how big level of, a drop. of audio Dude, snob. <laughs> it's no real talk, man. And like that melee, all oh, the, the it's crunch, so the good. punch. That it's is. so good. It's something it's that, good. I was saying, uh, blessing Roger and I were playing, uh, for a little bit last night. Um, while y'all were in the middle of a three and a half hour podcast about the amazing Spider-Man and it's still uh, going, it's still going, it's still going, uh, yeah. people say, and th- like blessing, uh, we were in a match that, uh, that I think was just Slayer, just get to, you know, 50 kills and we were popping off and it was like tight and we got oh, to yeah. the, like, it was 49, 49. And I think bless you might've like gotten that last kill and the way that like all of us fucking yelled at the end and like all this stuff, like the oh, thing yeah. that like, Cause, like, it was, it was the thing of we were like the, that whole match we were fucking around and like just joking and talking about shit. And then yeah. when we realized the score, we we're like, Oh shit, we got to lock in. It, and we were yeah, like, it was really close. All There's like three together, minutes left. And it's like, all watching right, our like, corners, watching the pass, yeah. trying to see where oh, enemies God. are coming in. It, it really just brought what I think, uh, like y'all have been, saying during these flights and uh like something that i just didn't realize until being able to play it uh yesterday is what it's doing what it needed to do and it brought me back to playing halo 3 with my friends back in middle school and like it's just it's such a nostalgic trip without feeling uh like it 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 feels how i remember halo feeling uh, in the best ways possible and uh, that's just i'm so excited to to play more of it the one thing like i would say uh, like, yeah, I agree. The XP stuff, uh, really weird. I hope they uh, address it soon or whatever. And the only reason I do notice it is because of, like, I love customizing my Spartan. And, like, that is the primary way to, like, get, all, like, all the cool customizable options now is to, like, level up and unlock those in the Battle Pass. So that's the, really the only reason why I notice it, where I'm like, fuck, I want that helmet, though. Like, uh, give, give me a little... Give, give me to that helmet a little quicker. Um, and then... Uh, uh, the playlist stuff where, like, I love playing 4v4. I'm never going to be a big team battle kind of guy, especially the way y'all are talking about it. Like, that's definitely just not for me. I, I know it's a beta, and I, I know, like, you know, we'll get the full launch in a month. But I, I just wish there was an, a, an ability to just, just select Slayer. Um, just when uh, doing, like, quick mm-hmm. play and stuff like that, if I don't have, like, a crew to, like, do custom matches with, like, every single time. Because, um, like, yeah, I don't love... Like, what you are saying, Andy, with that big team battle one where you're, like... Uh, you have to like go grab those five things and then bring them back. Like I feel the same way about like Oddball, uh, which I don't think is like a new um, new one. I've, mm. I, I feel like I've, yeah I've played Oddball before uh, this game, but that's just one I just never love. And you know like I, I got to be in the mood for you know, capture the flag and stuff like that. So uh, just like those two little things where I'm like, man, I wish these were slightly different. But I know we're going to get the full game in a month, and there'll probably be improvements as yeah. Well, so. It, even with Halo 5, like they are constantly changing playlists. And yeah, exactly. I, I love the seasonal, not even seasonal, but it's more of a, a weekly thing of like, hey, Shotty Snipes is back. Come play Shotty Snipes on this map. And and it's something that you kind of want to tune in for. And every once in a while, I'll get a text yeah. from my brother, Shotty Snipes, Halo 5. <laughs> like, and and um, yeah, I, I, I know that they do, bun- I mean, Bungie, 343 does a great job with sort of coordinating things like that. Um, I wanted to just quickly touch on, before you do that, before you do that real quick, let me tell you about our sponsors. 
This episode is brought to you by DraftKings. What an NFL season it's been so far, or so Andy tells me. And it's only getting better. Get in on all the action still to come with DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. This week, new customers can play free for millions with their first deposit. Don't miss your shot to get some skin in the game. Playing daily fantasy football is simple. Just pick your lineup of NFL stars while staying under the salary cap and score enough points to bring home cash. And with a free shot at millions, millions of dollars in total prizes, you'll feel the NFL action like never before. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code KINDAFUNNY to play free for millions. That's right, enter promo code KINDAFUNNY to get a free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. Do not miss out. Download DraftKings and play with the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply see draftkings.com for details next up shout out to fitbod don't get stuck in your workout routine that's why fitbod creates a fitness program that adapts to you based on your unique body experience and environment with new exercises and dynamic intensity so you're always challenged but always at your own pace uh g has been using this and it's been super fun for her to kind of like not do the same old thing but kind of to always have something new to look forward to when she is working out and getting in shape which she loves to do their algorithm uses data and analytics to help you build on your last workout fitbod workouts are balanced to avoid overworking muscles with varied exercises to keep you sharp so whether you're exercising three days a week or twice a day every workout is scientifically proven to be better than the last fitbod is only 12.99 a month or 79.99 a year and you'll get 25% off your membership with our link. Pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBod today and your future self will thank you. You can get 25% off your membership at fitbod.me slash KF games. That's 25% off at fitbod.me slash KF games. F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash KF games. And finally, shout out to Native. We here at Kind of Funny love the smells of the holiday season, and now you can smell like the holidays because we're talking about deodorant, baby. Native deodorants are formulated with ingredients you actually know, like coconut oil and shea butter. Plus, they don't use stuff like aluminum, parabens, or sulfates. Ew, yucky. And with their classic scents and rotating seasonals, they have plenty of choices, even candy cane, fresh mistletoe, sugar cookie. Uh, you know, G, she likes sticking with the classic, but I can attest to this. She smells fantastic day in and day out. And that's thanks to Native. Native is also good for the planet. They offer a deodorant in 100% recyclable material, plus they're vegan and never tested on animals. Keep the sense of the season with you with Native's limited time holiday scented deodorants. Go to nativedeodorant.com and use code KFGAMES to get 20% off your first purchase at checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com, code KFGAMES for 20% off. nativedeodorant.com, code KFGAMES. And now we're back, Andy. Go for it. Halo, what's up? <laughs> I just wanted to quickly touch on the polish that the overall release uh, uh, sort of presents itself with. Because the during the flights, even looking at the viewport, you know, you're looking at your Spartan standing there. And there was always something broken with it. And you just sort of expect things to be broken. So when the game launches and suddenly I can see how many assists I have. And then the Spartan that I'm looking at, which is mine, that I can turn around, suddenly isn't in 640p. Because um, that was happening a lot during the flights where the UI is super crisp, everything looks great. But everything in the background looks very, very low, uh, low quality. It's just like they're running a lower resolution for whatever reason. And to see how crisp everything looks at its like full power. And now we're ready to go. And here's Halo Infinite Season 1 dropping three weeks early or four weeks however much it is it it just feels it feels surreal to have that yeah. moment yesterday i didn't there was a lot of leaks pointing towards it and i still didn't think it was going to happen and it, it's here and it kind of just changed what the next month of mine looks like <laughs> yeah dude i mean so that's the question i have for you andy is you know obviously it's super 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 early with this but you're saying the next month of yours do, when do you see the halo kind of craze ending obviously we're in the the spike of it right now but do you think that in March you guys are going to still going to be playing? I think I think so only because it comes down to 343 adding new modes. I know everybody says give us a, a battle royale and I feel like that's the next Inevitable. logical place to go. Um but I 
enjoy the feel of this so much and I feel like I'm pretty decent at it and I normally gravitate towards games I feel decent at <laughs> and it's the same thing with Warzone where I played that for over a year and uh, I will still hop into Overwatch every once in a while because that's still a game that I play, you know. I think this has become a regular multiplayer game for me. Um, I don't know. I haven't played Valorant in a while and I feel like Valorant has not quite become the regular multiplayer game for me in the rotation whenever I'm bored, whenever there's not another game we have to be playing for review. I think that Halo, in the way that it is right now, where you have your single Spartan, you want to level up to get that new piece of armor, you want to get a cooler color, you want to go up in rank because I'm stuck at gold 2 right now, I want to get to platinum, whatever it is that we're talking about, it has that progression drive that I think really motivates me to keep on playing uh, as of right now. And I feel like I will definitely be playing for the next couple of months. I think I will be playing this in the long term, though, for sure. What map or mode or what do you think they could bring back like an old thing being like a classic thing being brought back would get you most excited? Um, I mean, it would be so awesome to see like lockout being brought back in this visual fidelity to have it look as good it would look uh, with the materials that they're using in this game. Uh, the art style and the visual fidelity in this game are so fucking superb. And I would love to see a map like Lockout, which is kind of the go to for Halo 2 is like that's where you go. That's where you go settle uh, arguments with friends, you know, yeah, you yeah. go to Lockout. And that's like the one that I'm hoping to see come back. I, and when it comes to modes, I've always been like Barrett was mentioning, I've always been the one that gravitates more towards Slayer. If it's 4v4 Slayer, I feel like big team battle Slayer is kind of the one that I would prefer to play anyway. Um, I'm more into CTF and Oddball on 4v4 maps. Um, I don't really know what sort of game modes I would be excited to come back. I just don't know. I don't recall what else there is out there, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, even things like shoddy snipers and stuff. Oh, oh yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Oh, for sure. I mean, yesterday we do, I made a custom game to be our final game of the night, Shoddy Snipes, and it was a freaking blast. Uh, to have those panic moments of two people up close just missing every snipe that they can. And then they remember, oh, I have a shotgun. Let me bust out the shotgun. Um, I remember, like, stickies only being in a mode. And these are all things you could just do in custom games. And the fact that it works so well, you could just say, no weapons. Everybody only has sticky grenades. And it's a stupid, fun game that you could do every once a couple months. And it feels fresh and new. So another question I have for you is we've been talking a lot on Games Daily about the progression system. We got alluded to a little bit in this, but one of the other things they announced uh, yesterday with the, the surprise beta release is that they're going to actually have season one last a lot longer than people expected. They thought it was going to be like three months, but it's actually going to end in May 2022. Does that do anything for you? Is that necessarily a bad thing, good thing? Are you kind of like, eh, it's fine? We'll see how I feel in, in March or April. Uh, that was immediately one of the first things brought up while we were streaming it yesterday on the Kind of Funny Games uh, Twitch channel. And somebody brought it up in the comments, and I was kind of like, hey, the game's been out for an hour. <laughs> like, let's, let's worry about that later. We're just having fun with this video game right now. I'll see how I feel about that later. I'll see, you know, how long will it actually take this battle pass to level up, maybe that was part of the design. Maybe it was, hey, this battle pass is going to take a long time to level up, so we want it to last all the way through May. Um, I don't really know. I, I will say one thing I have worries about visually is, like, I'm not super keen on the samurai skin in this game, like the, the samurai sort of armor-looking uh, thing. And I don't really know what art styles would clash well with Halo. Interesting. When it comes to Warzone, it, Fuck it. <laughs> you, when it comes to Warzone and Fortnite, it, it, even something like Warzone, which takes itself more seriously than a game like Fortnite, which Fortnite just is just the metaverse at this point, whatever character you want. But in in a game like Warzone, it took like a day to get used to the fact that there would be John McClane running at you um, or a skull with their head on fire. And you kind of go, oh, that's a really weird skin to see in this sort of like realistic, semi-realistic military shooter. And then who cares at the fun time? We're just blowing shit up. But in a game like Halo, it does feel weird. And I noticed I was going to have an issue when I was playing Splitgate because Splitgate kind of takes a lot of its art direction and arena style stuff from Halo. 
And it too, they have their sort of soldier looking Spartan dudes. And when they started introducing, you know, here's a, 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 a unicorn, whatever kind of sparkly skin. And here's another thing. It just, it feels kind of off. And I don't really know, like, we're not going to see a Spartan with their mask, with their helmet off. I don't think in multiplayer, like we're not going to see like a normal dude with their helmet off. And maybe it's, I don't know. Uh, uh what's his name marcus phoenix from uh gears of war like that'd be a twist that would be that would be wild as hell right but i don't think like we're gonna see anything that doesn't resemble a spartan so how really can you kind of expand the visual identity of what halo is how can you uh i don't, I don't know it's just weird to think about it's weird to think about tim you think that uh because i agree with you um that there's this i do think all it's gonna take is like one crazy set to be out there and then all of a sudden it's gonna change the game and it's like it could, our expectations, that could be all it takes you know? yeah yeah but do you think that the the ai the voices do you think that's going to be something that they have a lot of fun with and have a lot of like cool cameo type dlc packs for or do you kind of see it as like oh maybe there'll be one or two of them and that's the end of it i think we will start to see things um I think they're going to just take a lot of stuff from Warzone and see how they are doing where you buy the bundle. You get that skin, you get this AI voice, uh, and you get that emblem or whatever. I think they're taking a lot of their cues from Fortnite and Warzone with their battle pass, uh, aside from the progression speed. Um, I think so. I mean, as of right now, it is day two of Halo Infinite multiplayer. The world is their oyster. They can do so many things with it. It just depends on taking the first right step. And you take a wrong step one way and you get some IP that nobody gives a shit about. And it's going to get memed to all hell. <laughs> and it, suddenly that becomes like its own sort of topic. So like they need to like make sure they either partner with the right IP or bring on some sort of character from a game that feels familiar um, it would just be weird to me to see anything that's not a Spartan in this game. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting there is like thinking back to like Halo campaigns uh, of yore, and like you see the Marines without helmets, which I know is different than the Spartans themselves. But I feel like that'd be easy enough to translate to different outfits and stuff for the characters. You know? Well, we we even had the elites in multiplayer at one point. Um, yeah, that's right. But like, that's they're part of the lore. They're part of the the world here and when mm -hmm. i say like i am I would be surprised to see somebody with their helmet off i mean more of like we're gonna bring in the rock got it and you have to have his helmet off to show off yeah. that it's the rock you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that's sort of the stuff that's gonna i don't know how well it would clash but you're totally right it could just take here's one thing oh that's kind of weird and you get used to it you get you know after a day who gives a shit you're playing halo it's fun anyway but they just have such a kind of visual identity right now that it's it's one thing that when I'm playing Overwatch and I think Overwatch does it the best when it comes to cosmetics. I don't think I think they're untouchable when it comes to iterating and showing a really cool variety of different characters, sort of uh, skins and what we can do and how creative they can be with them uh, and just how good they look as well. In this game, uh, I started getting questions in chat about how what do the skins look like? And I kind of just was like, you know, I guess I've just been really stoked about different color combos. And maybe I should demand more than just <laughs> color combos. Uh, because yesterday the esports skins kind of released immediately, Tim. I don't know if you saw these. No, I didn't. But uh, Barrett, if you can look this up and bring this up for Tim, because they're really, really fucking cool. Um, Halo esports released all of their official team skins, similar to how in Overwatch... You could play as the Silly Roadhog skin, or you could get the Dallas Fuel Roadhog skin, that sort of thing. Gotcha. Um, and so all the orgs already have their official skins that they're going to be using in-game. Right. Um, and they are all really fucking cool. This is and awesome. And they look sleek as hell. They're basically team uniforms that they're going to be wearing. That's so and cool. It's really, really awesome. And at the end of the day, it's still just a material and texture color change. And maybe I should demand more from different add-ons. And it, obviously, you look through the battle pass, you see different add-ons that you, that you will be unlocking. And here they are. Oh, here are man. all of them. Yo, they are, some of these are hot. They are so slick. I mean, the thing with the Sentinels, the third on the from the right, it the left arm is all red, and it looks so fucking hot. God damn, uh, you just yeah, can't see it right so here. Cool. But 
the um the middle one is envy which is my squad which is really neat because envy is um they merged with team optic the green team uh they merged with optic they are merging their whole business so the envy skin will be the most rare of all of them because it's going to get put away forever when they eventually release the optic skin uh, so that's kind of like a cool thing that if you get it right now, you won't be able to get it in the future. So keep that in mind. Um, but at the end of the day, Tim, like these are just color aesthetic changes. There's not a whole lot else happening there. Um, kind of and, to your point, though, I, I think that th this is just day two, right? Of this. Oh, so for it's sure. Like, just yeah. color stuff for now and then maybe add more stuff later. Like, I wonder uh, what our conversation is going to be like in a couple months. Like in early 2022, are we going to be like, all right, what? Like that whole system worked then, but like I, I now I kind of just want to oh, customize every will. single thing that I want, you know? <laughs> yeah, we, de we definitely will. And I, I think one thing that I am kind of worried about is the same thing that I didn't love about Destiny was the the shaders and how how uh i i guess how static they feel mm -hmm. they don't feel super dynamic in the way that you could make that arm piece that certain color it's just if you get the shader with the red on the bottom and the blue in the top right then those parts will be blue and those parts will be red and the rest of them are black or whatever um and i think that's already kind of going to bother me because i see really cool shaders and i go ah oh, i wish those colors i mm -hmm. wish those parts weren't purple i wish these parts are purple so you sort of run into that already but um yeah we'll see what sort of variety they can bring with the different helmet styles and armor pieces but at the end of the day does it all just start to feel like armor noise in the way that like transformers movies just kind of like added more and more pieces to the transformer and you go it just kind of looks like noise now i need something a bit more distinct looking i don't know you know you bringing up these uh esport outfits that look really freaking cool like you are the biggest fan i know personally of watching esports you know so mike mike uh, you know so uh, mike mike well that, that there's there's him as well but like with the <laughs> overwatch league do you think that a halo league of some sort is going to be a big deal i i don't know if it will hit personally with me i know that halo esports already has a pretty dedicated fan base but i don't know if it's going to hit like I, I will say this right now, it will not hit League of Legends levels of popularity. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but will it be I mean, able to? I hit... guess I have talked about you. Like, what, yeah, what, it, what makes it work for Overwatch? But maybe you think not for this. I think it's the style of play, and I don't necessarily love watching controller gameplay, gamepad gameplay. Um, I think I'm always more impressed because when I think of controller gameplay, playing on a gamepad and watching that visually. I think of Call of Duty esports, which I don't necessarily love watching. Um, I am definitely more impressed whenever I'm watching somebody with a mouse and keyboard just like flick towards a target way the fuck up there and hitting that headshot. Those are those big wow moments that I love. And I don't know if gamepad gameplay gets me as excited as it used to back in the day when we were watching the Ogre Twins and oh my God. Walshy <laughs> and all those dudes making their, their mixtapes. So... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how in it I'll be until it's opening day and I'm watching my squad like that's the going to be the definitive moment of am I in or am I not? Because that happened with COD and I'm a fair weather COD fan. I'll watch during the, the, the championship tournaments or whatever, but I won't really watch day to day like I do with the Overwatch League or Va even Valorant. I'm a really big fan of Valorant esports as well. Uh, you keep referring to it as a gamepad game. Do you think that like Halo, obviously, traditionally has been gamepad, but there have been a couple uh, PC ports. I mean, even Halo 1 was on PC yeah. at some point. But this day and date being released, kind of equal opportunity across platforms. Do you think that there is going to be a shift to the mouse and keyboard? No, no, I don't think so. I think it's going to be what do you feel more comfortable playing? I, I know for a fact that I am so much better on mouse and keyboard than I am on controller. And maybe I'm just out of practice, but I've tried playing some games on controller last night and I'm just absolute ass. I just I don't know what I'm doing. It I lost the touch, Tim. Yeah, I lost it. Yeah. And it feels really, really bad because I was pretty decent in Overwatch on on gamepad. But playing keyboard mouse on this game, it feels really damn good. And I've seen some people out there say that, like, this game is not built for keyboard mouse. Don't play it. I, I totally disagree. I think this game feels fantastic. I think the aiming feels good. It never really feels uh, it doesn't feel like the um 
it feels like it was made natively to run on game uh, on keyboard and mouse, which is like it was. It was all in house. This wasn't some port done by somebody else. Um, it feels great. I don't really see. I think it all depends on what platform did you start off playing Halo in, and if you played on gamepad. Like I know I was watching Courage um, play with Doctor Disrespect and a couple of other streamers. And they are usually keyboard mouse players, but they are like, no, we're we're Halo gamepad players. Like, this is how we feel comfortable playing. With me, I totally made the change. And it's all about where do I feel my skill uh, ceiling is the highest, and it's definitely keyboard mouse. Really exciting stuff. Tim, well, are, you still, are you still doing the dual thing? Are you still rocking the dual thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm about I, that. I, I, I'm going to uh, when okay. I like really dedicate myself to, to everything. But yeah, it's in a place right now where I've been trying to just play on gamepad because when we did the test flights, 90% of the time I was just keyboard and mouse. Uh, and then 10% I would like do the the other version that my little monstrosity but i'm trying to switch it's awesome dude i mean the the thing is like now that the we're inching towards like the final release and even with this beta there are more options than there were it it seems like there because there was a lot of bugs uh with button mapping in the test flights and they seem to be gone i can't wait to take a sunday to just spend a couple hours like tweaking it getting the sensitivity getting everything right because yeah i'm really i'm really excited i think it's gonna be gonna be awesome i just wish that like they would make a controller for this <laughs> like specifically for this like i just want a left-handed thing with paddles yeah i feel that i i think i'm here's the thing i was rendering yesterday on, on my computer so i was like i want to play halo but i can't because i'm rendering so i fired it up on the tv behind me and man i really wish i could have just grabbed the controller uh, and i fired it up on the computer on, on the tv behind me on my xbox Mm-hmm. And I really wish I could have just fired up my controller and then just got my mouse and and moved over there because I didn't want to move my keypad over there. Well, guess what, Andy? You can. Okay. What you just described is as easy as plugging the mouse into the Xbox. That's and it, it reads both at the same it, time. It reads both at the exact same time. Oh you go God. in and you custom map. That's what I do. With I want to pop thing. off like, on my TV. It's crazy. It's crazy. Dude, yo, it's sick as hell. Yeah, that's what I, for my TV setup, I'm doing the same thing or at least trying to get the get it set up like that and it's like i just love that the game gives you the options if you think that we all sound crazy right now cool that's fine but you have the option to do this I, you have the I, it's mostly i just don't have space for my keyboard and i don't want to unplug the usb and all that shit so th- that would definitely be an easy alternative bless do you see yourself playing this for uh, like in the same amount of way that you got into apex i know apex has the battle royale that's a different kind of itch yeah. to scratch I, I want to. I want that that to be the case. I'm kind of in the market for a new first You're person shooter. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little bit a little bit of a free agent because like I think for the longest time Overwatch was kind of my go to fallback game of all right I'm bored I need something to play what's well, something that my friends are playing that like you know I feel like I'm competent at and can have a good time with yeah. Overwatch was always my fallback for that and then I think that eventually became. Uh, like I became Fortnite Apex. for a little bit, and then it became oh. Apex uh, inevitably. And a- Apex has kind of been that for a while. Um, but even with Apex, I think Apex has grown so much in the last couple of years, and they've added arenas this year, earlier this year. And like arenas was kind of my transition, I think, out of playing Apex Battle Royale and realizing that my Battle Royale era, at least for how how much I was fucking with it heavy early on. I think I'm I'm over the hill now in terms of me looking for a battle royale, and I think I'm back to like wanting something that is more of an arena shooter. And so like Apex Arenas has been, or at least was my jam for the the few months after it launched. I was super into it, but even now with the latest uh, like season and a half of Apex, I've not been as into it. And I I I think the thing is, it's just missing the hype and excitement from my friends playing it. And I think Halo Infinite. From playing it just yesterday, it seems like it has the customization stuff that I like in terms of good unlockables and stuff that is appealing to me in terms of oh I want I want to make my Spartan look sick I want to have I want to have them like done up in the best way. When I logged in yesterday, I saw uh, Mike Spartan and your Spartan and I forget who else like somebody else's Spartan. Chris Chris Anka. Chris Anka. Yeah, I was like oh okay i see what this is and, 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 I, need that. and you know, you know, I was like oh mike you know like you get you get the battle pass and you get that he's like oh yeah i spent 100 bucks and i, was like, oh, I spent 90 dollars <laughs> i spent 90 dollars like i'm not doing that but i do want to stri- oh, i do want to strive toward that because like that that to me is the shit that to me i think is 
super cool, super awesome, and super exciting. And like, I want to do that. And so, like, I think there's that aspect that's bringing me in. There's the aspect of I think my friends are going to be playing this for a long time. I assume that you guys are going to be playing this for a long time. And like, friends like I'm sure Yusef and like uh, Rihanna and plenty of other people who I play these types of games with. I assume are going to play this for a long time. So that has me in there too. And then also there seems to just be a lot of content here in terms of the rotating playlists and like 4v4 being something that is my jam. And I think I can see myself um, sticking with for a while and like knowing that like there's, there will be things funneled in like uh, shoddy versus snipers. And even the tastes I've gotten from Splitgate in terms of the different types of modes or possibilities of modes that can make their way into uh, Halo, or at least like we're inspired by Halo, and I assume this game will filter in. I'm, I, I, I think I'm gonna be playing this for a while. I, I wanted to mention that the, um, it's weird how our tastes kind of come in waves, and mm. once I had gotten that battle royale bug with Fortnite and then Apex and Warzone, like almost back to back to back years. Even though I was still playing Overwatch, which I think is just a very different game, uh, way more objective and team based. Um, I had thought, like, I never want to play an arena game ever again. Mm. Like the like Battle Royale is all I care about. I don't care about arena games anymore. So good luck fucking whatever Halo is going to put out. Like, it's going to be shit. All, I'm, all I cared about is Battle Royales. And I'm kind of with you, Bless, where I think I've just kind of slowly fallen off. And I had... I had already stopped kind of caring about Warzone for a while, and I, I would still play just because the friends were playing. But at a certain point, it just kind of got a little too tilting, and I felt myself just more mad at the types of players I was running into and 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 cheaters and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so that definitely sort of ruined a bit of the experience. But God, I never thought that I would be really back into a four V four plastic in. standard style arena game. I never thought I'd see myself being this into it ever again, especially a halo game, which I just, I had pretty much just fallen off a of halo completely except for, Oh, my brother wants to play halo five. So sure, I'll go play with my brother. Let's just, I'll, I'll go hang with him for a bit. So I'm just pretty surprised at how uh, just our personal tastes will kind of, yeah, you, you think you're done with one thing. And then if somebody does it right enough, at the right moment of you being tired of the other thing, it's just, it's all, it's all synergetic. Tim. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's like, it's the circle of FPS life, life where, yeah. yeah, like I went from being super heavy into the objective based to overwatch, like the 60, 6 v six objectives, like, you know, super stylistic, um, super casual, but also you can get hardcore into it. And yeah, those years where battle Royale was the thing starting in 2017 with PUBG, that solid there was those solid i guess three to four years at this point where i was with i'm with you andy that where i was like oh this is this is how i'm playing games now this is how i'm playing fps's now and i think this year it was apex arenas that made me realize no i'm i'm ready to, to go back into something that's a bit more team-based squad-based shooter and i think the thing that's magical with me and halo right now is i don't think i, I can't think of an instance where i've had a more condensed, very arena-based 4v4 first-person shooter like this in my life. Like the last one I can think of was Unreal Tournament. I used to I used to love playing Unreal Tournament on PC, and then I got like the PS4 game or PS3 game for Unreal <laughs> Tournament, which I know wasn't like great, but I played it anyway. But I always played those games with bots. I never played those games with other human beings, and I remember playing them specifically the old PC one and being and being like, man, one day I'm gonna have online and I'm gonna play these games with other people. And like I never played that specific type of shooter with other people uh, unless it was getting my ass kicked in like Halo or something. And now that I'm in the place where I have an Xbox Series X, I'm here at a Halo launch, like all the stars are lining up for me to actually be into this type of game. I think this will be my like OG, like first, uh, uh, like arena based first person shooter that I'm going to dive all the way into. And I think part of that is the reason why I'm like, all, I'm all the way in as of day two of me playing this game. And it's not only it's not only the customization you were mentioning earlier and wanting to make your Spartan look dope as shit. But I think one thing that is really exciting me about Halo Infinite, and it's something that I've I kind of felt was going to be the case from the earliest flights that we participated in was the idea that this is your Spartan. You're going to make it look dope as hell. But also, I want to keep track of my stats. I want to be able to, like, talk my shit about my KD ratio. I want to look at my win-loss record. I want to keep all... And, and Halo does has always done such a great job with that. Um, and it reminds me of, like, the early days of having the 
the Bungie app to look at um your 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 stats. Y- yeah, your stats with the uh, on Destiny and look at like your character there. The same thing oh, like I guess the I Halo play Destiny. I forgot about having Destiny. like the Halo Waypoint app on my phone and having the website that you could just easily go to and see your dude and see your KD and see what your last 10 games have been like. Game changer, I, man. I think all of that stuff just makes it feel so much more personal. And uh, it, it's another reason that I knew I was going to be in. And then sure enough, I downloaded the app and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is really cool. And they've, they're have they implementing this stuff in a way that just feels, um, I don't know, it just, it's just really cool to kind of have that, that one-stop shop as opposed to going to these third party sites to see how you do. Damn. You just, and, re- you just reminded me how much I got into destiny crucible. And I think that's another reason why I wanted to bring <laughs> this, cause I love that. Yeah. The DNA is there, man. And, and that's the oh, thing yeah. is like, you know, this being three, four, three, it feels bungee in a lot of ways. Right, Andy. Yeah. 1000%. Yeah. What, whether it's, and we mentioned this in the earlier flights, they was just, they were able to capture that magic. Mm-hmm. Somehow, and modernize it. Yeah. And, and definitely modernize it. And, um, I, I really think it's a combination of aesthetics and sound design and just feel like they absolutely nailed the hell out of it. Where I mentioned on a podcast that I do with Alana Pierce that like it felt like Halo 5 was made by a company that isn't Bungie, which it's not. It's 343. But Halo Infinite feels like they went back to the Bungie formula. Like we brought mm-hmm. on a bunch of Bungie vets who know what the core of Halo really means and feels like. And it really does. It really does genuinely feel like that. Yep. Well, I'm sure that we're going to be talking a whole bunch of Halo Infinite in the weeks to come, uh, including hopefully the campaign stuff, too, coming up sometime soon. But until then, let us know in the comments below what your experience has been with the Halo Infinite multiplayer. And until next time, oh, reminder, next week we'll be doing our Game Awards predictions where we're going to go through every single category and predict who we think will be the big winners. Of course, we're going to be live reacting to the show as it happens. A couple of us won't be there because we'll be down there. Isn't that right, Bless? I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm going to be down there. I'm going to crash the stage like Kanye West if Eternal doesn't win anything. I can't (laughs) wait. Love it. Very, very excited for you. But until next time, love you all. Goodbye.